Hey friends, what up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Men Nun Zayin, Daf Fifty Seven of Masechet Ksubis. Friends, the first part of the Daf. We continue in the Machlokas between um, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi about when it comes to paying less than the two hundred or one hundred zuz, respectively. Do you have to actually write it down like Rabbi Yehuda says, or can you merely verbalize it like Rabbi Yossi says? We then get to a new Mishnah, a Mishnah that we had referenced on the first Daf of Masechet Ksubis. The, right about, um, Abusula waiting 12 months and Amana waiting 30 days. Uh, so we're gonna get into that, into that. So again, that'll take us to the end of the dot. Friends, we're gonna start in the dot from the with Bays all the way at the bottom. <coughs> Last line on the page. After the Ram, this is talking interesting, Sugya. After the Ram Barchamo, have an Asiva, Lirav Avya. So the sister of Ram Barchamo was married to Riv Avya. Okay? That sounds very nice. Irkas Ksubasa, and Ram Barakhama's sister lost her ksuba, which is very interesting. I don't know. I feel like I've heard about this thing, right? That like, you don't want to lose your ksuba. So she lost her ksuba. Oh, so the comment of Yosef, and they came to have Yosef. Omar Lu, and he said to them, look, this is what we said in the name of Shmuel. This is Meir's opinion. A fellow can, you know, a fellow can have his, you know, can lose the ksuba and he can be married to his wife even without a ksuba for two or three years. What does it mean, Zodiver uh, Mayor? We had learned yesterday that <clears throat> according to a mayor, if he stipulates less than 200 or 100 respectively, he still has to pay it, right? Even if he, Says, uh, uh, less than 200 or 100, he still has to pay it. However, bilasus bilaznus. How come? It's bilaznus because even though he has to nonetheless pay the 200 or 100 respectively, um, she doesn't have that in mind, right? If he's gonna stipulate less than that, even though, yeah, he's gonna, at the end of the day, have to pay it because it's a tnai ksuba, he has to pay it. It's a tnai bezdin, so he's gonna have to pay it. But nonetheless, in her mind, she's not getting, you know, she doesn't have the security that she needs. Right, he said he's going to pay less than two hundred, even though technically speaking, he's still going to have to pay it. But in her mind, she doesn't have that security, and therefore it's bilasu bilasnos. And therefore, same thing. If you lose your ksuba, so based on the on the remeir sort of mahalich, so even though yes, you're still going to have to pay it, but without that document, without that assurance, it's bilasu bilasnos. So now says Rav Yehud, says uh, Rav Yosef that Rav Yudah says in the name of Shmuel that. That's just the opinion of a mayor, but the Chacham say, you know, you could, even if you lose your ksuba, if you don't have a ksuba around for two, three years, it's still okay. I, ima- I don't know, I imagine more than three years is probably also okay, according to that logic. But the point is, it's not an emergency. So again, so, also the comment of Yosef, so they came before Yosef, and he said to them, I'm on the second line of Nunzayin and Aleph, Hachiyam Rav Yudah this is what Yudah says in the name of Shmuel, Zod of Reb Meir, that it, Reb Meir says that, um, you know, if you don't have the ksuba around, or if, or, or, or if you stipulate less than the ksuba, then it's bilas or bilas nus. Have a chacham bom, the chacham say, Masha Adam is ishto shtaim v'shaloshan and ksuba, a fellow, you know, can uh, leave his wife without a ksuba for two or three years, and it's okay. Amalei Abai, says Abai. Ve'a Omar, Rav Nachman, Omar Shmuel, but doesn't Rav Nachman say in the name of Shmuel, Halach ha'kre meir b'gzei rosav, that the halach is like remeir when he's more stringent. So, so Yosef says, ah, okay, if that's the case, then you better rewrite the ksube so that she has that assurance. Because of Dima, when Ravdimi came, Omar B'Shim ben Pazi, he said in the name of B'Shim ben Pazi, Omar B'Shim ben Levi, in the name of B'Shim ben Levi, Mishum bar Kapar, from bar Kapar. Machlok is batchilo, ava basov, divri akol, ein amocheles. That the machlok is between Reb Yehuda, who says that, 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 meaning Reb Yehuda and Reb Yossi both say that you could stipulate less than 200 or 100 respectively. However, Reb Yehuda says you would have to write it down, right? She has to write a receipt that she received half of it. And Reb Yossi says you don't have to write anything, anything down. You could just make a, a, a verbal stipulation. So says, uh, Reb Yeshua ben Levi, that the machlok is bat chilo. That this machlok is between Reb Yehuda and Reb Yossi is at the beginning. Okay, we're gonna have to explain what this means. Avobasov, but at the end, Ladivya called Ena Mocheles, everyone agrees that you would have to write it down. Even Rabbi Yossi would agree that you'd have to write it down. For Rabbi Yochan and Omar, where's Rabbi Yochan? It says, Bein Bazov, Bein Bazov, Machlokas. That no, the Machlokas is both at the beginning and at the end. Rabbi Yudah says you have to write it down. 
And Rabbi Yossi says that verbalizing is enough. And Amr Rabbi Bo says, Rabbi Bo, that it was explained to me, Rabbi Yochanan's opinion, to honor Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, that Rabbi Yochanan says to Rabbi Bo that he and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, lo palginon a'adadi, we actually agree. We don't argue. So says Rabbi Bo that Rabbi Yochanan told him that actually he and Rabbi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi are in agreement. So how are they in agreement? I mean, it sounds like they're disagreeing. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, the machlok is at the beginning, but at the end, everyone agrees that you'd have to write it down. And um, Rabbi Yochanan is saying that it's a machlok is both at the beginning and at the end. So my batchila de ka'am Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Well, when Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says it's machlok is at the beginning, tchilas chupa. That's the beginning of the chupa. Um, I saw, so bia. What's the end? The after bia. So there are basically three stages over here. There's before the chupa, right at the beginning of the chupa. There's after the chupa that they already are married, but they haven't had bia yet. And then there's after bia. So there's the tchilas chupa, the beginning of the chupa. There's sof chupa, the end of the chupa, which is the same thing as tchilas bia, i.e., prior to bia. And then there's sof bia, which is after bia. So again, before the chupa, after the chupa, but before bia and after bia. So now. When Reb Yoshua ben Levi says that there's a machlokas at the beginning, so that's talking about before the chuppah. And when everyone agrees that you would have to write it down, that's after bia. And says Reb Yochum to Rabbo that when I say that bein bazo vein bazo machlokas, that v'chia kamino ano bein bazo vein bazo machlekes tchilas chuppah v'sof chuppah di tchilas bia. So. The tchil, so when I say that there's a machlok is tchila v'sof, it means tchila, the beginning of the chupa, and sof, the end of the chupa. So both Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Yochanan agree that at the beginning of the chupa, both Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Yochanan agree that at the beginning of the chupa, there's a machlok between Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Yossi. And at the end of the chupa, before Bia, there's a machlok between Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Yossi. And they both agree that after Bia, um, Rabbi Yossi would admit to Rabbi Yudah that you would have to write it down. Just that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi were referring to different parts, but then they agree about everything. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi was talking about Tchila and Sof. That was talking about Tchila Schopa and Sof Bia. Rabbi Yochanan, when he was talking about Tchila and Sof, that was Tchila Schopa and Sof Chopa, but they would agree that Sof Bia, everyone, right, both Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi and Rabbi Yochanan would agree that both Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Yossi would agree that you would have to write it down at that point after Bia. Kiyosu Ravin. When Ravin came, he says it slightly differently. Amr Reb Shimon ben Pazi says Reb Shimon ben Pazi and Reb Shua ben Levi. Mishum bar Kapara machlokes livasof. That the machlokes is actually at the end, right? Reb Dimet said the machlokes is at the beginning. It says Ravin the machlokes is actually at the end. Aval batchilo, but at the beginning, tiviakol mocheles. Reb Yehuda would admit to Reb Yossi that you wouldn't have to write it down, that she could just, um, you know, uh, um, accept it verbally, that she would accept less. For Biochon and Omar, and says, Biochon, Bimbozum, Bimbozum, Achlokes, both at the beginning and at the end, it's Machlokes. Omar, Babo, says, Babo, the Didim, Farsh, Limini, the Biochon, that Biochon explained to me, the honor of Bishop and Levi, Lopakin and Adode, that we don't argue. That being Rabbi Yoshua and Levi actually agree. My Levasov, Dom Rabbi Yoshua and Levi, when does Rabbi Yoshua and Levi say it is a Machlokes? Sof chupa. Let's talk about the end of the chupa. My tchila. What's the beginning when he says that everyone agrees that you would not have to write it down? Tchila chupa. That's the beginning of the chupa. V'chikamino ano b'imbozum b'imbozum achlokas. And when I, Rabbi Yochanan, say that both at the beginning and at the end there is a machlokas between um, uh, Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Yehuda, tchila bia v'sof bia. That's talking about the end, right? The, the beginning of bia, which is the end of the chupa, and after bia. There is a machlokas, but tchilas chupa, the beginning of the chupa, even Rabbi Yehuda would agree that at that point you would not, uh, you know, she would not need to um, uh, um, write anything uh, down before the chupa. Okay, fine. So what do we see? So we see that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi ag- agree, and Rabbi Dimi and Ravin disagree. Um, Regarding Tchila and Sof, right? Does everyone agree before the Chopo or, or does, right, do, 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 do Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi agree before the Chopo or do Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi agree after Bia? Fine. 
Amr of Papas is a puppy left Amr Babo, the Didi Mufarsh Liminid Rab Yochan and the Anav Bishub and Levila Pakinu Adadi. Says Rab Papa that if not for the fact that Rabbi, Yo- that Rabbi Abahu said that he heard directly from Rabbi Yochanan that he and Rabbi Yoshua and Levi were in agreement, Hava Amina says, Rabbi Papa, I would have actually assumed Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yoshua and Levi plige, that actually Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yoshua and Levi are arguing. Right? That, that um, you know, let's say according to um, Rav uh, uh, Dimi, so, so, um, um, Rabbi Yishuv Malevi says that there's a machlok at the beginning, but everyone would agree at the end. And Rabbi Yishuv Malevi and, and Rabbi Yochanan says bebozim bebozim machlokas that Rabbi Yishuv Malevi and Rabbi Yochanan are taka arguing. Rav Dimi v'Ravin lo pligei, and it's Rav Dimi and Ravin who are not arguing. My sof de kama Ravin sof chupa that when Ravin says at the end. It's talking about at the end of the chupa umay tchilah de kamer avdimi tchilas bia, and when when and when avdimi says the beginning, it means the beginning of bia. That sof chupa and tchilas bia are essentially the same thing. My kamash malan. The Rosh Hashanah says, who cares? Meaning, Rabbi Bo had said that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yosheb and Levi are in agreement, which means that Ravdimi and Ravin are arguing. Rabbi Papa says that he would have preferred to say that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yosheb and Levi are arguing. And Rav Dimi and Ravan are actually talking about the same thing. What's the difference? So how come Ashman? This is what it's coming to teach. The Plige Tre Amorai Ataimed and Afshayu Vlo Plige Tre Amorai Ali Bedechad Amor. Well, because according to... So Rav Papa says, I would prefer to say that there's a machlok between Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shobin Levi. How come? Because why not? There's a machlokas between Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yishuv and Levi. Rabbi Yochanan holds one way, Rabbi Yishuv and Levi holds another way. It's a machlokas. There's no problem. There's nothing. I mean, machlokas is just part of the part of uh, learning Torah. There's machlokas in there. There's nothing wrong with a machlokas per se. However, to say like Rabbi Bo, that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yishuv and Levi agree forces us to say that Ravin and Rav Dimi, one of them is right and one of them is wrong. I mean, if we say like Rabbi Bo, that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yeshua and Levi don't argue at all, well then, either Rav Dimi is right, or Ravin is right, right? Either Rav Dimi is right, that both uh, um, um, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi agree after Bia that you'd have to write it down, or Ravin is right, that both Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi agree that b- at, before the Chuppah, you wouldn't have to write it down. You know, in, in one, I mean, that's a, a, an argument about facts. One of them is going to be right. One of them is going to be wrong. Either Rabbi Reb Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi agree before the chuppah, or they agree after the chuppah, and they argue in the other case. So, Kilu, if you say that Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shubh and Levi are arguing, okay, so they argue. What's the big deal? But if you say that they agree, then that means that either Rav Dimi or Ravan is, is, is wrong, which is uh, not ideal. Okay, fine. Now we get to a new Mishnah. This Mishnah was referenced by um, the first Mishnah, or the first staff of Mesech the Ksubis Nosen, the Psula Shneim Asa Chodesh Mishetav Abal, the Fanes Asatzma. So a Besula, we give her 12 months from the time that the, um, that the, um, that the husband, right, from the time the husband says, okay, let's get married. So we give her 12 months, um, the Fanes Asatzma, to get herself ready to get married by jewelry and whatever else she wants. Just like when we give 12 months to the um, bride to uh, prepare herself, we also give 12 months to the groom to make sure that he has money to pay for the suda. And for a widow, it's not 12 months, it's 30 days. He gives man velunisu. If it came time for them to get married, and um, they did not get married because uh, the the husband was stalling. Ochlos mi shelov ochlos betrume. So at that point, he has to already, meaning if time is up and he's stalling, so then he's at that point he needs to start paying for her mizonis, paying for her food. And if he is a kayin and she's a basi stral, she could already start eating truma from that point on. Reb Taifid Omer Nosen La called truma. Reb Taifid says. That once he has to start paying for her food, he can give her entirely truma. All of it is truma. Now the thing is, if when she's anida, when she's tmea, 
she can't eat trumen. Now, um, so, but she, he's only giving, right? Tarfan says that he can give her entirely trumen. So what does she do when she's in either? So she'll sell it and then, you know, she can use the money to, uh, to buy chulen. Now, Bakiva Omer, Mechza chulen and Mechza trumen, whereas Rabbi Kiva says, no, he gives her half chulen and half trumen. So when she's Tahora, she can eat trumen. And when she's Tmeh, she eats chulen. Hayavam eno maichel betrume. A yavam does not um, feed trume. So if you have a Bas Yisrael who's engaged to a um, to a uh, uh, koyin and then he dies, so now the brother has to do yibum. So he cannot give her the the, the yavam cannot give her trume. Also, so shisha chodoshim b'fnei abal. If six of the months she was with her. Um, you know, for her fiance, and then he dies. And then for the remaining six months, she's got this yavam before the marriage. Even if all of the 12 months minus one day were with the husband. Um, and one day was with the yavam. Or if all 12 months were with the yavam, just that the first day was with the baal, and then he dropped dead. And then he dropped dead. She cannot eat trumah. So Mishnah Rishona. So this is the initial version of the Mishnah, um, that once the time comes for her to get married, once the twelve months are up, he has to start paying uh, for her food, and she can eat trumah. Bezdin Shalachrei and Amru, but later courts changed it that Eina Isha Ochelas Betrumah Chetikonis Lechupa. That no, she can only start eating trumah from the time from from the time of the chupa. So even once the 12 months are up and he's stalling for whatever reason, um, she cannot yet eat chuma. He's got to pay for Amazonas, but she cannot yet eat chuma. She can only start eating chuma once she uh, goes, uh, once there's chupa. Says the Gemara Minani how do we know that, that um, a basula waits 12 months? Om Rav Chizah says, Rav Chizah don't make because the Pasuk says, Vayimur achia ve'ima teisha v'nari itanu yobmo osur. That it says by Lavan, by Rivka and Eliezer, Lavan tries to say, you know what, maybe Rivka could stay with us for Yomim o Osir, either 12 months or for even 10 months. So we see that a Basula uh, waits for 12 months before the uh, Chasana. My Yomim, so what does it mean Yomim, right? When Lavan says maybe she could, she could stay for Yomim, Yilem Etre Yomim, if it means two days, Right, so maybe he's saying Teshavanayri Tanu Yomim Oser. Maybe Lavan is saying maybe she could stay home with us for an additional two days or maybe additional ten days. So Amru, what? So Hachi, what? Where am I? Yomim Oser, my Yomim Ilim Etre Yomei. If we say it means two days, Mishtoi Inish Hachi. Does that make any sense? Would people really negotiate in such a manner? Amru Le Etre Yomei. Lavan offers two days. Can she stay with us for just another two days? Amulu lo. Eliezer says no. Amulei asar yomei. So he says, okay, what about 10 days? I mean, that's not, that, 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 that's punkt fakir. It's the opposite of, of a negotiating strategy, right? Right? Uh, offer something less and, uh, right? Uh, also, you know, also, uh, offer, uh, you know, make a, make a lower request and when that's rejected, make a more substantial request. That, right? That's the opposite of, of, of what logic would dictate. Elamai yomim shonu. So rather, what does Yomim mean? Yomim means a year. So what Lovin is saying is maybe she could stay with us for a year. Okay, you don't want a year? What about 10 months? The Chsiv is a puzzle says, Yom Tiyagulos says, it says by, if you sell a, uh, a property in a walled city, so you have one year to redeem it, otherwise you can never get it back, even by Yovo. The Ema Chodesh, maybe I'll say that Yomim means a month. The Chsiv Chodesh Yomim, as it says until a month of days. So Yomim over there means a month. What well, we prefer to learn out Yomim from Teshev Anaira Itanu Yomim O Osir from Yomim Tiegul also rather than Chodesh Yomim, right? Because that one has, it's not just Yomim alone, it's Chodesh Yomim. So we'd rather learn sort of vanilla, as they say by JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, plain JavaScript. So we'd rather learn out sort of plain Yomim from plain Yomim, not plain Yomim from Chodesh Yomim. Friends, sounds very beautiful to me. Does it sound beautiful to you? Om Rebzeri says, Rebzeri Tana, it's taught in a Brisa, Tana, when it comes to a, a, a minor, Ben Hiu Ven Avir Yechol Na'akev. Either she or her father could say, wait a second, I'm not into this. I don't want to get married. 
I understand why she could say, I'm not interested in getting married. But regarding her, regarding with the father, I don't understand. If she's happy to get married, why should the father interfere? Right? Meaning, so I understand why she could say, look, I'm not into this. Okay, but say to her. You know, she, she, she could say she's not interested in getting married. But why should the father, if she's interested in getting married, why should the father say no? Because Sava Ashta Loyado, the Machim Mimrda, Vinafka, Vasa Vinafla Ilavoy. Because he's going to say, look, she's a minor. You know, she doesn't, she, she's not making a good decision. And what will end up happening is that she's going to turn around. She's going to be a minor. She's going to be married. She's going to say, whoa, 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 I don't want this. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to do this all over again in the future. So therefore, the father kind of has the veto power because I guess it ultimately becomes his responsibility to now get her married another time in the future. So therefore, he um, does have input in this as well. Amr um, Abba Bar Levi. Says of Abba Bar Levi in Poskin Alaktana La Kishiktana. This is very, very interesting. You know, because I think anybody who's been involved in Babylon Talmud over the past, I don't know, how long? Uh, from the beginning of Yvamas was how long? Yvamas was a hundred and it was 130 pages or something? I already forgot. Man, I could tell you from the first day of Yvamas, I'm probably sure that I knew exactly how many pages Yvamas was. Now I already forgot. Then. Maybe it's like 130 or something. So anyways, so 130 pages. How, how long is 100? How many months is 130? It was, it was like four months or something. And already we're about two months into Ksubis. So anybody who's been, you know, following along, you know, not following along. Anybody who's been experiencing the world with Babylon Talmud in it, together with all the Chevra <laughs> over the past six months, experiencing life through the lens of babbling. Wow. That should be our, like, thing. Experience life through the lens of babbling. <laughs> That should be Janine. Janine, how is that? Can can you give us some uh, some uh, uh, brand marketing uh, feedback over here? How is that as sort of like a uh, tagline? Experience life through the lens of babbling. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. What do you want me to tell you? So anybody who's been experiencing life with us through the lens of babbling over the past six <laughs> over the past six months. Um so so uh so okay, yeah, right, so okay. Okay, we can only babble for so long. Ultimately we have to get back over here, we got work to do. So anybody who's been experiencing life through the lens of babbling over the past <laughs> six months. So the concept of a minor, of a katana getting married, it's weird, but it's not foreign to us, right? Meaning we we it, it comes up. So but listen to this. Amr Funa Bagra oh no, I skipped. Amr Bab Amr Abu Bar Levi says Abu Bar Levi in Poskin Alaktana la Sia Kishiktana. We don't sort of like make plans for a katana to get married as a katana. Ava Poskin Alaktana la Sia Kishigidola, but we can make plans for a katana to get married when she is older. Okay, so I guess they could prearrange the shidduch, but 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 that shidduch would have to be once she's an adult. Um okay and says Rashi. Rashi says the first thin line of Rashi's Aval Poskin Vidavka below Kidushin. Specifically without Kidushin. Aval Kidushin Bikat Nuslo. But we don't do Kidushin with the Ktana Achatigoda Vitomer Bifloni Ani Rotza until she becomes an adult and says, I'm interested in this fellow. So friends, I mean We've been learning for the past six months that a father has the ability to marry off his daughter who's a katana. We talked all about Mayun. We talked about how if the father dies and the mother or the brother marries her off. You know, but it sounds like, I mean, from what it seems like, we don't do that, right? Meaning, the, the I guess, me the Orais of the father can marry off his daughter, but it sounds like at least me the Rabbanon, we don't, we don't marry off a katana. We wait until... She's older and she says, you know, like, I'm okay with this. Okay. So, 
Again, Amr Reb Zera, Tana, Tana, Bain, He, Uvein, Avia, Yichon, La'akiv. Bishlam, E, no, I, I, I'm all over the place. Okay, Amr Reb Abba, Bar Levi, Ein Pok, Skin, Al Tana, La Seir, Shik, Tana. We don't make a date to uh, marry, to, for, for a Chasen or for a Ketana when she's a Ketana. But Poskin, Al Tana, La Seir, Shik, Dola, but we can uh, plan a Chasen for when she's an adult. Pshita, uh, meaning when she's a, she's a Ketana now, but we can already be planning a Chasen for when she's an adult, pshita. This is obvious. Uh, I may have thought to say I may have thought to say that now that she's a katana, if you start talking about a chasana now, so it might freak her out, and we don't want to freak anybody out. So kamash no, it's okay. We could we could plan a chasana. Ultimately, she's going to have to, um, you know, wait until she's older and say that she's cool with it. Amravuna says Ravuna bagra yom echad. If she becomes a bogeres for one day, meaning once she's already 12 and a half in a day, vinis kadsha, and then she gets betrothed, at that point, it's just 30 days like an almona, right? So when we say that um, we give a basula 12 months, that's only, in, I guess, as a naira. But once she's a bogeres, we treat her as an, as an almona, and we only give her 30 days. Meisve, we have a kasha. Bogro, that if she becomes a bogeres, then it's like she's already tivua. Meaning, I think we're going to see this in a minute. Basically, the fellow is Mikadish, or he betrothes her. But then after he betrothes her, he's got to be like, all right, let's do it. Right? So there's the betrothing, and then there's like, all right, let, let, let's get married. So from the time that, right, that he says, let's get married, so then there is 12 months. So, what is, so we say, Meizve Bagra, once she's a Bulgaris, Hare Kitvua, it's like she's already been, you know, said, like, it's like, meaning immediately after betrothal, it's as though he already said, all right, let's do it. You don't need to wait for a second step. My love, Kitvua de Besula. And, and let's say it means, like, the Tvua of a Besula, i.e., 12 months. That it, when, a, a Bulgaris who gets engaged, who gets betrothed, Immediately starts the 12 months. Lo kitvu da amana. No, it's like uh, an amana that it's 30 days. Tashma coming here. Bogeres yashah sa shnei masar chodesh. That a bogeres who has waited 12 months. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer says, Rabbi Eliezer, ho v'chai bayle b'mzono seh yafer. Rabbi Eliezer says that since the husband has already has to pay for her food, so then he has exclusive rights to annul her vows. So what do we see? So it says, Bogeres yashah sa shnei masar chodesh. It says a bogeris, so it's waited 12 months. So it sounds unlike Rafuna. Rafuna says a bogeris is 30 days. Over here we're saying a bogeris is 12 months. Ema bogeris vishesha so shnei chodesh. No, say a bogeris is 30 days. And a naira who waits 12 months, um, you know, in either case, then Rabbi Leizer Omer says, Rabbi Leizer ho'uvay l'chai b'mzono seh yofer, that since the husband has to pay for her mizonis, so then um, he can already have exclusive rights to annul her vows. Experience life through the lens of Babel. Very, very nice. I should speak to Amuna Weiner, who I worked with um, for the branding for Babel on Tama, on Tama two and a half years, a long time ago already. Wait, where, 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 what are we up to now? Like bas- basically like September? And uh, when did I work with Amuna Weiner? It was probably uh, December 2019. December 2019. And where are we now? September 2022. So almost three years ago. Maybe I should ask her if she could like redo the branding stuff to add our new tagline. Experience life through the lens of Babel. <laughs> Let's go right there. Toshma, come in here. I'm an Iris S. Absula. So a fellow who... Uh, a fellow experienced life through the lens of Babel. Toshma, Ma'ariz is a besula, a fellow who, 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 um, uh, betrothes a besula. Bain Shetava Abal. Whether the husband then said, all right, let's do it and let's get married. Vihima Kevin, and she's like, no, wait. Uvin Shetava here, or whether she's like, all right, let's do it. Uval Ma'akev, and he's like, no, wait. No, Sunlo Shnewasa Chodesh, Mishas Tviya. So we give her 12 months. From the time that, uh, you know, one of them makes the claim of let's do it. Avalo mishas erisin, but not from the time of erisin, right? Meaning, as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago, there's the betrothal, but then there's the, okay, let's do it. So from the betrothal, the clock doesn't start ticking. The clock starts ticking from the time of let's do it. Uvagra, but once she's a bogeres, harei kitvua. 
Well, then the clock start, starts ticking immediately. Ketzad, how is this? Bagra yom echad, that once she's a bogeris, once she's 12 and a half in a day, Vinis Kadsha, and she's betrothed, Nos Noshnim Asr Chodesh, we give her 12 months. Vil Arusa Shloshim Roman and Arusa 30 days, we'll have to see what that means in a second. Tufta de Ravuna Tufta, so it's a Kasha and Ravuna, because here we, we say explicitly that once she's a bogeris and she gets betrothed, she has 12 months. So we see that even a bogeris has 12 months, not 30 days. Now, my Vil Arusa Shloshim Yom, what does it mean, and in Arusa 30 days? Um, her Papa says, her Papa Achikamra, this is what it means. Bogeris Shavu Aleh Shnim Asr Chodesh, Bibagrus. A Bulgaris, a 12 and a half year old, who a entire year went by, she's already 13 and a half years old, and she hasn't yet been betrothed, and then she gets betrothed, we give her 30 days, like in Amona. Right, 13 and a half years old, is already, we start getting nervous. Uh, right, she's already 13 and a half, and she's not engaged. It's, uh, it's a little uh, nerve wracking. I, I, I won't tell these people how old I am. Let's go weiter. He gets Mamvelo Nisu. So, uh, oh, so we said that if the time came and they aren't yet married, so then, um, so then, uh, so then what? So at that point, she could start eating uh, Truman. That's what the Mishnah had initially said. Amaula says, Ula Dvartere, that Mida Oraise, Arusabas Yisrael Ocheres Ocheles Betrumen. Mida Oraise, if a Bas Yisrael gets engaged, Betrothed to a koyin, she can immediately, as an, as 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 a as a meorasa. Once she's engaged, she can start eating trume. Mid oraisa, shenem arz basuk says v'choyin kikne nefesh kinin kaspo. That when a koyin acquires a a fellow, so that refers to a slave, but also, right, if he's mekadesh a woman, bekesef, right, or or in any way becomes kinin kas, it's like a kinin. Vainami kinin kaspo. This is also kinin kaspo, and therefore he can, uh, he, he, she can immediately start eating trume. Matam amru ein ocheles. So then says Ula, how come they said that she does not eat trume until she gets married? Well, we're concerned that um, if she is betrothed but not yet married, and she's still living at her father's house, and she's now eating trume. Well, maybe her brothers and sisters are going to be around and she's going to give them some trume, which obviously they wouldn't be allowed to eat. And that's a misa, a misa bide shamayim. So obviously if it's by accident, they won't get misa bide shamayim. But Kilo, it's a serious situation. And because she's not yet living with her husband, she's still living at, at her father's house and, and the, the, her family is, is, is not kohanim. So therefore, we say that she doesn't eat trume until she moves in with her husband when they get married. Yachi, if that's the case, he gives mamvelo nisu nami. But if that's the case... Well, then 12 months later, when it's time to get married, and for whatever reason, the, fa- the, uh, the, the husband is delaying, so we say she can already start eating truma, but shouldn't I still be concerned that while well, she's still living at her father's house and maybe the brothers and sisters are going to eat it? Well, once 12 months are up and he has to start paying for her food, well, he's going to set aside a special place for her to receive and eat her food because he doesn't want her giving it to the other people because he's paying for it. And therefore, since he's paying for it and he wants it to be exclusively for her, so you don't have to be concerned about her sharing it with other people, and therefore it can even be true. Elamiato, lock it koyin li Yisrael. What if a, a Yisrael hires a koyin to do work for him? Lo lecho betrume. So that koyin should not be allowed to eat any truma on the job. Duma also the mecho bade. Because maybe the other people, right, if he's working at, if he's working for Yisrael, maybe the other people in Yisrael's family are going to eat his truma. Hashta midid usafule midid achle. Which Gemara says that's not exactly a concern because, you know, this fellow is coming to work for right. This coin is coming to work for Yisrael. He comes, he does work, and they pay him. They give him money. They give him food to eat. We're not concerned that he's going to give them food to eat. They're the ones paying him. They're the ones providing for him. He does work, and they provide everything else. So we're not concerned that they're going to end up eating his food. He, he's receiving from them. They're not receiving from him in that respect. Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda Omer Omar Mishum Simpon. So Shmuel Bar Yehuda gives a separate answer, which is um, that the reason why a, a, an engaged girl does not eat um, uh, trume is because of a simpon. So we're concerned that something might come up and they might not, like the, the engagement will be broken off. Right? Maybe you'll find some kind of a mum for some kind of physical reason, the physical reason that he preserves to be a, a defect and that he's going to call off the marriage. And therefore, um, 
if she's now eating truma and then the marriage gets called off, well then she shouldn't have been eating truma in the first place retroactively. So therefore, right, so mishum simple. That maybe, uh, you know, the, the, there's, um, may, maybe the, um, the engagement will be annulled, in which case she shouldn't have been eating trume. But then, I mean, we said that, you know, it, well, let's say this, even in the case where she gets married, she goes on to the chuppah, they just haven't had beer yet. So yeah, he doesn't necessarily know if there are any physical defects that might cause him to want to undo the marriage. So even nichnas al chuppah v'lo nivalo, she shouldn't yet be able to eat truma because let's say there's some kind of a mum and the marriage gets annulled. So how's it me badik badikla? Badamayal. Well, he's going to do an inspection before uh, he marries her. So there won't be any um, surprises after the chuppah. El meata eved koin shilakach misol. Okay, but what about if a koin uh, purchases an eved from a Yisrael? The lechol betruma that eved shouldn't be allowed to eat truma. Mishum simpon because what if he finds some kind of a mum on the Eved and, uh, the, and the sale gets invalidated. Simpon Babadum Leko. Well, there is no kinds of mums like this by an Eved because the Iyad Avra, if it's a out, an outwardly visible mum, Hakachazile would have seen it. Vidigavoy, and if it is a un, invisible outwardly mum, the Mlochakabai, Vishabesesis Loichpasle. He's hiring, he's buying the guy to do work. He doesn't care, uh, what he looks like under his clothing. Nimsa Ganif, O Kubiustus, if the um, slave turns out to be a thief or a kidnapper, he gil. That's just part of the, you know, it's just the way, part of, uh, what does Rashi say? He gil, the lokeach veina mekach batol, uvaisa, where am I? He gil shestamun ganov mein. Okay, apparently, by default, you have to assume that a slave is a ganif. So, so therefore, you know, if he turns out to be a ganif, that's not a reason to invalidate the, the uh, sale. Because you kind of assume that, anyways. My eco. So then, what 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 could be other reasons to invalidate the sale? List the mizuyon. Are you concerned that maybe he's an armed bandit, an armed robber, or muhtav the malchus? So maybe there's a there's a there's a a, a a a bounty on his head to the king. Hanukale islu. These things, you know, there would be a, a, a rumors about. You would have known this in advance. So again, there isn't really a situation by a slave that would uh, you know be. Cause to invalidate the sale. So now, whether it's the reason of Ula who says that we're concerned that she's going to give the truma to her relatives, or whether it's like uh, Rav Shmuel by Yehuda who says that we're concerned that maybe the um, the uh, the marriage is going to be annulled and therefore she shouldn't have been eating truma. At the end of the day, she can't eat truma. My benayu, what's the nafkemina? Ike benayu, kibel, mosavalach. Right, either a situation of if he accepted the mumin, right? So if he says, look. Okay. Now I'm aware that she has movement and I really don't care. So in that case, you don't have to be concerned about Simpon, but you do still have to be concerned that she's going to feed her relatives. Alternatively, if um, the, the father gave her to the messengers of the husband or the messengers of the father went together with the messengers of the husband, at that point, you don't have to be concerned about the family members, but you do still have to be concerned about um, finding a mum. Friends, that was Daf Nudzayim of Masech the Exubis. The beginning of the daft was a very interesting machlokas between Reb Meir and the Chachamim about if a fellow, if, if a person loses their ksuba. Um, it sounds like take, if you lose your ksuba, you should, you should rewrite it immediately because to, um, be concerned about Reb Meir's opinion of that it could be bilas or bilas nus. Um, okay. And then we saw different, uh, we saw machlokas between Reb Dimi and, um, Ravin about, um, how to understand Rabbi Yochanan and um, Rabbi Shua ben Levi about where Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Yossi agree and disagree regarding do you have to actually write, you know, if you want to give less than the 200 or 100 respectively, um, do you have to write it down or is it enough to be verbal? Uh, and then we got to the Mishnah, which we had already been working with from the first uh, daf of Masech Tzubis about that by a Besula you wait 12 months and Amana you wait 30 days. Um, in order to give time for the groom and the bride to prepare for the chasana. And then we say that once 12 months is up for a basula, so then he already starts paying for Mazonis and she could start eating trume. We saw a machlokas between Reb Tarfin and Rabbi Akiva. Reb Tarfin says that at that point, the husband can give her all of her Mazonis as trume. And when she's a nida, she'll sell it and, you, and use the money to buy chulin. And Rabbi Akiva says that you give half chulin and half uh, trume. We learned out the 
source for waiting 12 months from Lavon and Rifke. We also learned out something very interesting, which is that even though Mida Oraise, a father can marry off his daughter as a katana, in practice, we wait until she's older and uh, says that like she's down. We then saw a, uh, we saw the opinion of Avuna, who says that once she is a Bulgaris, then it's no longer 12 months, it's 30 days, but we, we, we uh, proved that wrong. Although we did see an interesting thing in a Brisa that once she's already 13 and a half, she doesn't have 12 months anymore, we got to get on with it, and it's just 30 days. And then we saw an inter- a machlokas, a yesodis dika machlokas between uh, Ula and Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda about, even though Mido Oraisa, a, a, an engaged, or a basisrael who's engaged to a kayin can eat truma from the time that she's betrothed. However, Ula says the reason why we don't do that is just in case she may end up um, uh, giving the truma to her uh, siblings who are not kohanim, which would be a problem. Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda says that we're concerned that maybe the marriage will end up being called off in which case she shouldn't have been eating chuma. Friends, I was up in Zainab, Mesech Tuxubis, hope you enjoyed. Peace out.